Hello everyone. So this is the first video in a new series of videos we're releasing bi-weekly where we go in depth on a topic. Unlike the podcast, it's not tied to like recent news or anything like that. Um, it could be related to some old stuff like this one's going to be, um, but just topics where we think some interesting discussion uh, can be had. So here we're talking about are old books still relevant, focusing in on art of exploitation. So um, in my opinion, at least in terms of art of exploitation, uh, I, I'm going to say no. Um, but where do you come down on that, Z? See, and I, I think you kind of know from experience that I love to recommend this book. Uh, while I do prefer recommending Open Security's course for kind of learning, I do definitely believe the book's still relevant. Yeah. So I do want to say there are some other books that I think are still relevant. Um, like, I think I like Shellcoder's Handbook and stuff like that more than Art of Exploitation. But um, since you love recommending it, I, I'll let you get into the, you know, some of the things you like about Art yeah, well, actually, since you mentioned Shellcoder's Handbook, I will say I agree. Like, that kind of has a bit more of a light because its content is almost more like a reference. You can kind of turn to it even just for, like, inspiration, just for ideas, and just see how things were done, even when it's not necessarily the... Or even when the technique isn't so relevant. When it comes to Art of Exploitation, though, I guess p part of me is curious on... When it comes down to the details of this book, I think for learning exploit development, so just your basic exploit development, uh, chapters two, that's the programming chapter, and chapter three, exploitation, are still relevant, uh, still kind of matter, because you still need to learn this basic stuff before you get into the modern exploits. Yeah, this doesn't get into rock chains, cop, whatever. It doesn't get into any of the advanced content but it covers kind of the basics that you still need to understand before you get there and those are those are probably the two chapters where when people recommend this book it's about that um or in the first edition it was just one chapter it was just a programming chapter uh that kind of included all of that um and at that time that book was still recommended mostly because of that section there is the networking, or what's the order here? Yeah, chapter four is networking, uh, chapter five, shell code. I mean, these days, I mean, I love the shell code. Your writing's different. I mean, it, I think there's still some relevancy here, but. Yeah, so shell coding is one of those things where I my I kind of think this book is a bit too dated. Um, most systems now you're going to be dealing with no execute unless you're doing like CTF challenges or something. In that sense, shell coding is basically dead in favor of return oriented programming or something like that. Yeah. Or um, on the other hand, you may end up, you know, in your initial Rob chain, you might do that to disable NX, but then you've got a very straightforward, like you're just able to execute. There's no restrictions. There's no real shell coding involved. It's just your machine code. Yeah, I mean, you could literally just compile, like, a tiny C binary and just execute it Yeah. Um, at that point. Which so, I'd say is a bit different from shell coding. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Yeah, no worries. I mean, I think, so the programming section, I, I kind of agree, is where a lot of people, you know, that introduction aspect is where people recommend this book. My kind of problem with it is the a lot of the stuff covered in the programming section, I mean, it's kind of a given that you're going to need to know a little bit about programming before you jump into exploiting binary stuff. And while it does provide some of that introduction that you might need, some of it is also irrelevant because this book focuses basically exclusively on x86. So like the memory segmentation and stuff like that, while it, it might be neat to know and it might uh, help inform you as to why things are the way they are now, they're not necessarily things that you need to worry about too much. Like memory segmentation specifically, um, it, it gets kind of complicated and it's, it's really not relevant to exploitation nowadays, unless you're hitting like legacy systems, right? I mean, it, it depends on what you're hitting. I mean, I, I would definitely say that understanding the different segments of memory still matters. You know, if you're saying in the heap stack, uh, static initialized, whatever. Yeah. I mean the finer details though, like that the book kind of goes into there but you know yeah i don't know i mean i think it still comes down to the idea of kind of 
getting some of the basics in before you start to run. So learning to walk before you run. Although I do agree, like it does go maybe a bit deeper than what you need for these days if you're not hitting uh thirty two bit stuff. I mean that isn't to say though that exploitation on thirty two bit is dead these days either. I mean you've still got the embedded devices, for example, that still may be running on thirty two bit system. So it's not like that's just dead. It's definitely less popular. And, and it I might do be think more relevant for CTF stuff too. So yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm not too keen to count CTFs as an example for like. I mean, if you're learn, if you're learning exploit dev, maybe you are learning it just to do CTFs. But I feel like that's going to be a pretty small percentage of the people wanting to learn, versus doing even CTFs to learn for more practical purposes. Yeah. So. While I would say the book, I I don't want to say the book is bad. Like I own a physical copy of this book. Uh, it's one of the few that I do actually have. Um, it's it's well rounded. Like I like how it goes a little bit into like some of the networking and shell coding stuff, like we were talking about earlier. But if I come at it from strictly like an exploitation perspective, I I just don't really think it has too much to offer because even if you ignore the x eighty six stuff, um, that isn't like super relevant anymore, like the calling conventions and uh, the deeper details on segmentation you're only covering overflows and format strings in this book. And when you're talking about modern exploitation, format strings are basically dead. They're, the compiler will warn you against stuff like that. Compilers have gotten too smart. So format strings are basically out the window. And then overflows, those are kind of dying out too. So a lot of the bugs you're seeing nowadays are more like, uh, you know, like use after free or type confusion, logic bugs, uh, information disclosure, some more complex bug types, which aren't touched in this book. So I, I agree, but I don't know, would you, like, let's say somebody, so I guess, to be clear, like, when I tend to recommend this book, it comes down to somebody who's just getting started, you know, going to write their first exploit, possibly following along with something out of this book, maybe not, but at least getting some of the foundational ideas out of this book, uh, not getting up to uh, more modern stuff, use after free, all of that, um, would you recommend somebody who's just starting, like, skip over that basic, you know, you know, the sma the stack smashing 101 style exploit? I, I wouldn't say to skip over it, but the problem is this book is lacking some of the more advanced stuff. And where I think this book is kind of made irrelevant now is I think there's better mediums where you can get the same information and more in a more interesting way like youtube okay so like if you look at like live overflows videos his videos are going to cover a lot of what you'll find in this book and more and you have that visual aid which you just can't really get out of a technical book so while i think art of exploitation itself isn't bad i just think there's a lot of other things that are better if that makes sense yeah no i, I don't disagree with you on that point like i said my my go-to recommendation is uh, the Open Security Intro to Software Exploits course. Although yeah, that, really that course. might be changing just because of some difficulties around the VM. Um, but what I would tend to do, that that course has a Shell Coder's Handbook as its official textbook. I tend to recommend Hacking Guard of Exploitation as kind of an asset to that. Like, if you get stuck on the early stages of that course, give AOE have a reference look at how it tries to explain that basic stack smashing that those basic concepts uh because i find there's a lot of overlap between how uh cory explains them in the open security course and how they're explained in shell coders handbook whereas art of exploitation kind of takes a different spin on things i guess i mean there's obviously they all do it their own way uh but that was kind of my experience comparing them uh, so I would kind of bring a Art of Exploitation in kind of as the reference there. I'm not saying it's the best reference, just that I think, you know, you still need to learn this content, so it's still relevant in that sense, not that it's the best place to go to. I mean, it, some people do prefer learning out of a book, and that's fair. Um, I don't personally believe that people are just book learners or just video learners. Like, I think you could learn from whatever. But, I mean, there are free resources that you can go to before you come to this book. That point I do agree on. Okay. 
Um, one of the thing I did want to bring up too is we were kind of talking about uh, this a little bit when we were researching into the uh, like looking back at the book because it's been a while since I've read it like uh, you know multiple pages and stuff like that at a at the same time. But um, so they talk about like heap exploitation and um, one thing that is kind of lacking in this book too is the fact that when they're talking about heap exploitation, they're talking about just the contents of the heap. They're not talking about attacking the allocator or like any of the house of uh, the house of insert whatever here. I mean, house attacks. of when did Malik Malf Karim come out? Like, I don't so think this book was I 2003. Don't... So it might Malik been... Malf Karim was around then. It might have been 05. I feel like 05 is too late for it. Uh, but it wasn't much. Like, it's that would have been kind of the. Like, not necessarily bleeding edge, but it would have been pretty. That would have been some of the more advanced content to cover for a book um, at the time, like, except from 2003, although it could have been added in the 2008 update. Although, at the same time, I mean, Malik Malfcarium was really all theoretical. There were no, like, proofs of these exploits. It was just talking about them. It wasn't until Dave Malfcarium, I think it was that actually kind of had some actual exploits, like, demonstrating each of the House of Attacks. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think this book is all right from a beginner standpoint, but I think there are, at least personally, I think there's just too many things that are that are missing out of it. And that's not the book's fault. That's just because time has kind of moved on. Um, and one thing I will say, I, I think Shellcoder's Handbook... I'd I'd recommend personally over AOE if you had to choose one, um, just because Shellcoder's Handbook it does go a little bit more into the vulnerability discovery and the fuzzing side of things too. It, it kind of goes, it covers a broader range of topics than just exploiting SAC and heap overflows. Yeah, you know, it talks just... about those, but it also goes into like the fuzzing and stuff, which I think is very valuable for um, in introducing early to a beginner. You know. Yeah, I mean, I tend to treat Shellcoder's Handbook like I still occasionally will look at Shellcoder's Handbook. Yeah, I have um, it just I a don't, few, like feet away from me. Yeah, like artifact exploitation, I don't like you know refer to for anything. Uh, yeah. Like it, whereas I do with Shellcoder's Handbook still a little bit. I mean, just because there is there's a ton of content in Shellcoder's Handbook. Yeah, with AOE though, it's I don't know my. My hold on it still being relevant comes down to the fact that, like, you still need to learn uh, that introductory, like, that very basic stuff. You do make a fair point about not being the best resource. I just wouldn't go so far as to say that it's no longer relevant at all. Um, although it is worth knowing, like, it doesn't come, like, um, even when it comes to no execute. So the 2008 update did add some stuff about no execute. I don't think the 2003 version covered that at all. Or ASLR, but if I recall, like it's not even it's your basic like return to Libsy stuff. It's not ROP yet. Yeah, which when you're getting into modern exploits, that's that's where you're ROP's looking your main more thing, to. But see, I guess that's the thing. Like I I still see artifact exploitation as like a stepping stone. Um, like I would yet recommend people go further on. Like if you're when you're learning ROP, I'd recommend ROP Emporium. Um, they like. I wouldn't recommend artifact exploitation for that, but as a starting place, I, I don't know. Maybe you are changing my view on that a little bit. To be fair, um, I mean there is a lot that is outdated. There are better resources. I'd still like to say it's somewhat relevant, but I while we're kind of on that, I do want to say the other topics in it. Like the only purpose I think of recommending artifact exploitation are those two chapters, maybe. The countermeasures, not count, sorry. Maybe, you know, you could get a low bell shell code. I wouldn't recommend it for that. Um, But, like, the crypto and networking, you can get that elsewhere. Like, that's not what made this book popular. Yeah. I mean, when I was reading back through this book and I was looking at the topics and stuff, all I was thinking in my head was, well, I could just see the same information on a channel like live overflow on youtube and then i have visualization um 
you know, I can actually like it, it can be very useful when you're talking about memory corruption and stuff like that to be able to visualize this is what the heap looks like. Whereas in the book, it's mainly just telling you what it looks like. So that loss of that visual aid, I'm, I'm kind of edging towards, you know, with things like YouTube and stuff like that and more content around that seeming to come out over the last couple of years. I just think this book is starting to kind of show its age and uh, and not be as useful in that regard. So then I guess like are books at all still relevant? I mean, so I think we can both agree that papers obviously would still be relevant because they're covering kind of the latest stuff. But, um, you know, talking just about books. Books in general, I think they're still relevant. Yes. Um, even though I don't think this one in particular is maybe still relevant. Uh, one book that I really love, for example, is Modern Operating Systems. And that book covers things that you just can't really find easily online, or at least not all grouped together. You know what I mean? And that's where I think there are still books that definitely hold relevancy. So like Modern Operating Systems and Showcutter's Handbook are probably the two that I would say for sure uh, I would still like recommend to people. Fair enough. I since you're mentioning modern operating systems like yeah that's a classic textbook for operating system classes yeah i was gonna say i've heard it's used in universities and stuff so yeah yeah, that's where i think i first came across it was my university operating systems course i mean wait when it comes to the exploit books i'll actually say i have a hard time with a lot of like a lot of books do get dated pretty quickly a lot of books i would agree you know just aren't terribly relevant or aren't relevant for long the main concern is like when you're dealing with a technical topic things get dated and change reasonably quickly i have for a while held that especially again with artifact exploitation that perhaps you still it's still like learning the basics so you know kind of taking a math concept like it's okay if your book on learning how to add is you know, 50 years old, because it's still done the same way, I think. I don't actually know how it's taught these days. It is actually being taught in some pretty wacky ways from what I hear. <laughs> well, I know multiplication's being taught in some different ways, like lattice multiplication and stuff, but I'm not sure if addition has really changed too much. Either way, my my point, maybe that does kind of feed the point, but um, my thought there being, like, some of this older content still has some value, because you still kind of need to learn this. Um, although you make a fair point about since it is all 32 bit, it's, there is some lesser relevance to that. It's just limited in what it can offer. That's all. Yeah. Uh, something I was kind of thinking about lately though, is you were kind of bringing up the fact that books can become dated. It's it's interesting. I can't, I, I can't think of any exploitation based books that have come out in the last like decade. That have focused like focused on the same types of topics that books like Art of Exploitation has. Have have I missed any, or is it just like people aren't really writing those books anymore? I don't think people are writing them. I, I mean, there's more around the meta, of like discovery and stuff, and less about the actual exploitation. Obviously, No Starch has put out some related books, like you know, uh. Was a bi- the binary analysis book came out I think a couple of years ago, uh, but like that's not really in the art of exploitation area. I mean, you could see some if you include all of art of exploitation, like the networking stuff, you can call some overlap with like hackers playbook ish. I, I mean, even that isn't of, quite fair. Kind of why I bring that up is I wonder if like publishing companies and and potential book authors and stuff like that are starting to see that books just aren't the the optimal medium for conveying this type of information it just doesn't work as well you know so that's where i was kind of thinking about with that so yeah i mean there's definitely a move like i mean web application hackers handbook rather than updating the book they release their online web academy i actually didn't know that yeah that's port swigger's web academy uh, was released rather than updating the book. Oh, okay, I knew about Port Swiggers, but I didn't know that that was. Yeah, they were you know, behind kind of the Web whatever. Application Hackers Handbook. Okay. All right. Uh, that being said, I, I think I brought up all the points I could about like our exploitation stuff. Um, do you have any like final thoughts on that? Um, no, not really. I think we've hit kind of the main things. I mean, this is definitely an older book. 
I would still hold that there's value in learning about some of the older concept, like the just the basic stack smash. But I would agree with you that there are better resources to go to now. I do think this is just one option of those. Okay. So that concludes this discussion. Uh, we will be doing, uh, like I said at the intro, we will be doing these videos bi-weekly. So in two weeks, we will have another discussion up. We are planning at some point to make them weekly, uh, but for now, they're bi-weekly. And we will see you guys in the next video.